Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. have here um i i would i would have to say recently controversial because uh it seemed like the 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 internet and social media was uh at a at a at a, at a standstill and also at a um, bipartisan like how the dems and the republicans are these days we have uh indie sensation jordan oliver with us here in turbo tabloid and i must yo, ask yo, you, yo. and i must i must ask you before i go into everything where the weed at? <laughs> where, where the, who, 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 who to connect? Who, who to plug? What you mean? You know what I'm talking about. What, who? The reefer. We rolling up? The oils? What we got going on? What we doing? Oh, shit. I wish, bro. I'm not even home. Oh, oh, that's the reason why. Okay. I yeah, I'm not I, even home. I just got back from Mexico. Oh, that's where the shit was at. Got you. Got yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had to hit up the Johns over there. Yeah. By the way, what what is the difference between um, Mexican marijuana and the United States Kush? Say it again. Sorry, I got a, a like a, some sort of like a emergency shit on my phone when you said that. Oh, <laughs> the feds are listening. <laughs> yeah. The feds are trying to join like, in. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> There's a little, you know, you know those memes that say, like, FBI? Yeah, yeah. Ixnay on the marijuana name. <laughs> What's the difference between a Mexican marijuana and that United States Kush? I don't know. I mean, because over there, it's like, it's pretty much like the Cali stuff from the uh, the dispensaries and whatnot. So I feel like over here in the East Coast, we're getting dispensary stuff now. Oh, okay. I, I, I think of Mexican marijuana and shit. I, I start thinking like Cheech and Chong shit. And th- you thinking of the yeah. big ass blunt, the big ass blunt, or the the van that's being <laughs> on the fucking weed. You, you know, I had to I had to get an extender when I was over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just you, the, the way that that shit comes out over there. You could have that shit connected like by IV or some shit. It'll be connected to your to your fucking neck. Be like, oh, yeah, dude, this shit is amazing. Well, yeah, what you was wrestling for? Um, the crush out there this week? No, it's Triple A. Oh, okay. Um, how's the Mexican the Mexican fans treating you out there? It was nuts. It was it was super nuts. There was like five thousand people in the in the in the auditorium of TJ. Mm. It's where like Rey Mysterio and Psychosis debuted, Conan, a bunch of you know super crazy people. But the crowd was going nuts. Orale, your, gringo they, flaco, mira ese gringo flaco. Yeah, they're they're they were definitely saying some some shit at me. <laughs> <laughs> I know they threw hella hella money though. Oh, they oh, at the oh, end of the match. Uh, oh, they were throwing you pesos. Yeah, it was raining pesos. I was like, oh shit, gonna hit me. That in was the your face. flight home, boy. <laughs> that was no, that was that was for him at the bar to get tequila shots and shit. Because he can't bring <laughs> he can't bring that shit home. He, he could have he could have used it as toilet paper because apparently nobody out here could use that shit. There's no toilet paper out here. <laughs> yeah, man. He could use Mexican Shorties pesos out as, as, pay, as fucking ass wipes and shit. <laughs> Out of that, he could roll up weed in that shit. This is worthless. Oh, man. It's, it's worthless. But no, it's good. It's good. It's good that, that you're able to branch out and go across the border. Uh, uh, hey, was it tough getting back in the country? 
<laughs> no, yo, I thought everyone was telling me, like, my girlfriend's Mexican, she was telling me it's going to be difficult. Wait, wait, hold on, like, wait, 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 let's not, wait, wait, backtrack that shit. Wait, hold on, let's not, let's not overlook that your girlfriend is Mexican? Yeah. As in from Mexico or American Mexican? Mexican American. She oh, lives okay. over here, but she, yeah. Oh, okay, right. That's not. That's not. That she was, she's been there a bunch of times. You know what I'm saying? So she was telling me, she was like, "Oh, it's gonna be difficult. Like they're gonna not let you back for like they're gonna question you and like all this shit." I walked up to the shit and they were like, uh, "Hey, where are you going?" I was like, "The hotel." They were like, "Okay, come in." Wait, you went across? You walked across the border? Yeah. So we bus from <laughs> from, from San Diego to the border. Okay. Walked across the shit. And then walked back at like one, and then got another bus, and went back to the hotel. Oh, wow! That that's shit. Now, now you know why Trump wants the wall. Okay, I get it. I see everybody could come in and out. All right, I got it. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty. I was like stressing too. I was like, I had programs from the show in my suitcase. I was like, they're definitely gonna gonna try to like hold me up or whatever. But they literally just asked me that. They're like, where are you going? I was like, uh, the hotel. They were like, okay. Wow, uh, uh, right. I know what it is because he's white. I got it, no problem. Definitely. We <laughs> out here, boy. Because <laughs> he's, he's white. No, I asked you because we had a um, we had a friend of the show, Akira Kwan. He's been on, and he said when he went to Mexico, it was for him being Asian and all. They buried him like they were. They were really going at him. So I was figuring that the Mexican crowd would uh, definitely hate the gringo on that side. Yeah, they were, they were definitely they were going nuts. <laughs> Did you get hit with batteries and shit or like <laughs> Nah they they threw they threw beer. <laughs> well damn. No, they didn't throw batteries. They just threw um um transmissions. They threw car transmissions at me. That's nothing. <laughs> Conan had to come out with tortillas and shit too. So they were they were not happy. <laughs> I would have ran. I would have went out there with like a, a a fucked up lucha mask and and made it mad half ass and then everybody was put like, fucking wheat flour on that shit. We we know it's you, Jordan. Cabron, we see you. <laughs> Yo, if if you know me, you know that I I be talking I always shit to fans. I get in the fans' faces. Like I'm trying to fight fans. You know what I'm saying? Before the show, they came up to me. They're like, hey, uh, we just want to let you know that this row over here is cartel. So uh, watch what you say. Holy Don't shit. Don't get in their faces. Uh, they oh. might kill you. I was like, I don't know what row they talking about. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what? But the sick part is, is that they, I don't think they want to be treated different either. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. Why, why, yeah, exactly. It's like, why are you not talking shit to me, bro? I'm like, sitting here. You should talk some shit <laughs> they to me. They stand up to you. Are <laughs> scared? Hey, kid, yeah, come on, bro. No, <laughs> we've met a couple of times too. Because as a matter of fact, we've met at um at Homicide's 25th anniversary show. Um, I've seen you a couple of times. You're a, you're an avid photographer as well, right? No, I mean I take pictures of myself. <laughs> I, oh, that's what it is. Oh, all about you, Jordan. Yeah. Where's the pictures yeah. of me? It's all about yeah. Don't you have like a big industrial size camera? I was waiting for your photo shoot. <laughs> no, I wish I had a big ass camera, bro. <laughs> I want I want to see. I got a cheap. Keep at the iPhone. I'm like, yo, take this picture, bro. I want to see him. I wanna this... Take you take take pictures of me like your little French girls. <laughs> take pictures of me like your little lady. I'll be like, yo, this wall, this wall has nice stuff on it. Take a picture of me, please. When, when I have to be honest, when I see Jordan Oliver, uh, you don't scream wrestler. You scream stoner skater boy who enjoys uh, long sessions on Call of Duty Warzone. Where did wrestling come from? I just love I just love wrestling. Like my whole family watched wrestling and shit. So like I just I just saw it one day and I was like, I gotta I wanna be a wrestler. Like I was like five years old. Was it the creepy like, uncle? Because everybody had that creepy uncle who started us watching. Is that is either our no, grand, either uncle or our was, grand our grandparents? It was my mom's actually. Wow. Cool mom. Yeah, she was she, I, I was like, We just moved from we just moved back to New York or whatever and my dad like he was like, Oh, go to bed or whatever so I was in the room. And then I heard my mom watching TV, so I, like, crawled around the corner. I, like, snuck down. She was watching SmackDown or some shit, and I was like, oh, this is fire. Oh, shit. So, wow. So, exactly. SmackDown was my first show, too, when I was. Yeah? Yeah, that, that, absolutely. Was it with your mom? Well, I didn't even know Raw. It was my mom's 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 like mom's mom's years. cousin. Oh. You was five years old when you was watching it? Yeah. So, when when you you you, you watched the wrestling, you, you, you the door opened up to you, and... This is what you had automatically said at, at five years old. I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna put the posters on the wall. I'm gonna get the act. The, you know the the wrestling figures. I'm gonna get yeah, the bro. When did it? When is it that it clicked that you you were able to say, I want to get in the ring? No cap. I started backyarding when I was like six. 
So I started back at wrestling when I was like six with my friend in his basement. And like, I just like, for me, like, I never thought like, oh, like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, I always like, literally, like, I know it's like, like a corny what people say, like, the first time I saw it, I knew I was going to do it. Like, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, that's what I'm doing. And I always, ever since then, like, knew that I could do it and I would do it. But like, the first time I saw CM Punk on ECW was the, that was the first time that I really was like, Oh, I can do it for sure. Jesus Christ, you said that, and I just all my 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 you feel old, don't you? My, yeah, exactly. My AARP card just came in the fucking mail. <laughs> so, this is shit. It he was said, definitely CM Punk versus Elijah Burke. I'm over here. Me. I'm over here going. I remember. Yeah. I remember I CM Punk versus like John Morrison. Yeah, exactly. I'm over here going. I remember the night at the Garden when Hogan won over a Sheik, and he's over here talking about. <laughs> Fucking e- the reinvention of ECW, which was a real, was a, was a, which was a real doozy in itself. Exactly. But, you know, exactly. Yo, I was just talking to somebody about this, about, like how bad that ECW was, but like I'm so thankful for it because, like, I'm such an ECW guy, and like I love old ECW so much. It's like probably like one of my favorite promotions ever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if it wasn't for like the shitty ECW, then I wouldn't know who CM Punk was or even like that ECW. So. No, that's true. And ECW you, opened the da- door for a lot of young guys like Sheamus and fucking CM Punk and all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kofi Kingston, yeah, There was a positive light to it, you know. Uh, that's right. As shitty yeah, as it obviously was. Obviously, it's going to get bad. If, if the name wasn't ECW, then I don't think it would have a bad, like, Stigma image. on it, yeah. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird thing, too, especially for your generation that you, you, you'll you have to go back and look at the older ECW stuff and go, oh, yeah, that's not the same. <laughs> it's not yeah, the same. Yeah, way different. <laughs> oh, Bubba, great. oh, Bubba, you're going to say that now. All right. What was, um, <laughs> where was your humble beginnings from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Newburgh, New York. It was For a little bit, it was the murder capital in New York. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, it was right by Albany and shit? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. <laughs> he's, he's basically hood. Yeah, he, he got hood crap. Hood crack? He got hood crack. He got hood crack. <laughs> he was born with crack. He was he was he was slinging crack at six. He, right, right, right I now. wish, bro. Now I have money right now. <laughs> he was slinging that crack. So when was when was the first time that you actually uh got into an official ring? What was your um? What well, before we get into that, um, what was school like? What were we doing? Were, did we go into like theater classes? Were we an athlete? Were we going to stuff like that? Uh, no, I didn't really go to school. <laughs> oh, great. He said. He said, "Fuck that! I'm uh, going back y'all wrestling in my friend's basement at six. I'm not going to school from now on. That's fuck it. school, man. Fuck school. Give him middle, Honestly, fing- bro, give him middle fingers at second in, grade. Fuck you." <laughs> in 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 school, like I amateur wrestled for a few years, but then I then I started boxing for a little bit. But like, I really wasn't going to school that much. Like I was doing bad shit, like smoking on the bus, drinking on drinking in school, like shit. That, like sixth grade, I started smoking and drinking in, in school and shit. So like, I really didn't come up too great. Like. So wrestling's really all I ever had for me. Damn, shit! I thought my I thought my beginnings was like, what the hell? Newburgh had like projects and shit. What the hell was going on out there? <laughs> it's just it's just not like the graduation rate is so low over there that the school is like I don't know if you ever heard of like Opportunity High, but it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much what they called it. Where like I mean, believe me, like, New- barely Bro- half the class would graduate. Yeah, Brooklyn, we called it outreach. It was basically. Uh, Hey, come in. We'll pay you if you want to come to school. Hey, we, we. <laughs> we'll give you, yeah, we'll they give you a PS4 for it. Come yeah, we got, we got weed. We got weed. You want to come in and learn? We got weed. <laughs> come in and learn. At my school, they pretty much had like a bunch of like classes where you could like go to get a job. So like there would be like a mechanics class or like a electronics class. Uh, for me, I took graph. I took graphic arts because <laughs> I heard Matt Seidel on a podcast say that he makes his own designs through Photoshop. So I had to learn what Photoshop was, so I could do that shit for myself. How's that? How, how's that going for you these days? It's good. I still, I still, uh, I still like fuck with Photoshop, and I make my own my own shirt designs for the most part. But I'd be too lazy, bro. Oh, that's that's what's to blame. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Got fuck you. It. Got you. So I can be, he can be play, he can be playing Warzone, all right. He, he other people can make shirts. For listen, him. you guys, you guys laughed at the assumption. Look at this. Listen to the story that he's telling us already. <laughs> I wasn't that far off. It was probably Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three that he was getting into and shit like that. That shit was awesome. Bro, only was awesome. the wrestling games. I only played the wrestling games. Which Here is comes your, the pain. Which is your favorite? Uh, my favorite wrestling game of all time is probably like SmackDown vs. Raw, two thousand seven. I thought, he was, I thought he was gonna say yeah. fucking. Uh, I thought he was gonna say the, the backyard wrestling volume two. Legends of Re- Legends of Yo, Legends I of never Wrestling. Even played the backyard wrestling. Xbox, that shit. 
right? The backyard wrestling games. Like he's, he says, I never played. I said, neither and I. I just, yeah. I watch people play, and I go, yeah, I'm good. I stole from from Blockbuster. Um, Bro, I, I only watch people play them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh no, it's good, but you never played it. You can't judge it. Yeah, I don't know what shit tastes like, but I could pretty much tell you it's disgusting. It's, yeah, so I, yeah. I, if I, I see I, it, I, I know it's not good. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, SmackDown vs. Raw Seven was the first game that, in, that actually showed them sweating. The soundtrack was really awesome. the, the soundtrack was awesome, and yeah, the soundtrack fucked. That's and I remember, I remember the first the memory of that game is when you could go outside into the barricade with the fans, and you could fucking like throw yep. someone off the, on a table or some shit like that. Were, were you making Jordan Oliver? The I made I made the call Jordan Oliver versus um not you. I'm Jimmy asking Jimmy Lloyd. I'm asking Jordan did he create himself? I created myself. Of course, <laughs> everyone course, I still did. Create myself, everyone bro. did. You still, he's, he's, he's still creating. Is it cool to see when people create you in the games now these days? Like when you were, when you're like on. So I made a fire pro of him. Yeah, right. A two, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually downloaded that. Have him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fire pro. Is it cool to see that? No, so I'm gonna be honest. It is really cool, but like when they look trash, I feel <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's like, is that what you think of me? Is that is that how I? I'm look? like, I'm like, God damn, why, why is my hair to my ankles? It's not even that long. I don't, what are you, <laughs> you talking about? You put me in a about? bad angle. It's like, why do I look so emas- like emaciated? I look so thin. I'm so <laughs> Yeah. They go they sometimes they be looking not not right at all. And pasty. They have me in trunks. I'm like, I don't even wear trunks. I'm so short. <laughs> it's like pasty skinned. <laughs> yeah. I saw we uh, like I mentioned, we saw you at the uh, the the um homicide twenty fifth anniversary show in Brooklyn. Yeah. And you were part of that um shit show match that was like at the <laughs> end when there was no ring. And I was like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The- Hell yeah! Oh, thank God I was pizza roller and shit. Thank God I was drunk. Oh my God! Uh, When you do, do do you look at stuff like that and go, "What the fuck am I doing?" (laughs) No, I don't give a fuck, bro. I just, (laughs) I just love, (laughs) love doing shit. (laughs) Fuck it, I got a check. You paid me in cash. Fuck it, it was weed. Fuck it, I'm weed, cash, and an Xbox One, and I'm all right. Yeah, shit. So when was the first time you actually stepped into the squared circle as a? As uh, the the wrestling terminology, what was the first time you got into a, an official ring? First time I got into like a ring was like uh, probably like 2012. Uh, some dude I know named Devon, he bought a ring, so we I started I, we started backyarding in his ring. <laughs> but the first time that I got into like a real real like a like actual like a at a show or like training or whatever was probably like 2015. Were you were you formally trained? When I first had my first match, no. No? So uh, The first three matches I had were I was untrained. But then my third match, I wrestled Coco Beware. You know, like the, the WWE <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, exactly wait, wait. right. And it's not out of Coke, all... out of all people on the planet, you could have fought. Yeah, so I got in a ring with the one-man gang. I was like, what? What? <laughs> Okay, this is where we're going. All right. Of all people, I fought Coco Beware. My, my third match ever. I was in the ring with um Scotty Too Hotty. That's what it was. <laughs> um, so um, so you're not being formally trained, and you get into the ring with Coco Beware. Did did he look at you and go, "Kid, what the fuck are we doing here"? <laughs> no, because because I don't think anybody like knew necessarily. Because mm-hmm. well, I wasn't tell- like. Going up to people like, oh, I'm trained. Well, I was like, well, I was lying. I was like, yeah, I trained here, I trained here, and blah blah. blah. It was oh, okay. Wow. It, 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 I don't know whether that's a great achievement for you or it's like how the mighty have fallen for Coco Beware wait, hold to get it to. <laughs> wait, wait, hold. So, so before your first legit match, you, you went in cold? Like, uh, what was the training personally up to that point if you weren't? Well, I had, like I, I said, I haven't back here wrestling since I was six, and we got a ring in 2012. Yeah, but like, a re- you, like from. But who, like, where, well, you were just watching a lot of wrestling yeah, and you just. Where'd like, you learn your craft? You just mimicked a lot of stuff that the guys were oh. doing. Oh. Not this is gonna this, not to like flex, <laughs> but I always. <laughs> Why I did always, I just like, I just uh, saw air quotes? I, <laughs> not to, I saw air quotes. Yeah, I did, flex. I did do air quotes <laughs> because like when I when I see something wrestling wise, like ever since I was little, like a move or something, I can just like figure it out visually. Like I know I don't need like I never needed anybody to like tell me how to do like a move necessarily. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like. For me, it was just like, yeah, like you said, just watching wrestling, watching Tough Enough, watching like like seminars online. Like, there's like a, a two hour Kenny Omega seminar online. Like, though you ever see like John Cena's training videos and shit like that, I used to just like binge watch that when I was like 
really, really young, like bumping in my living room floor, just like trying to figure out how they did it and shit. You ever thought about taking like like theater courses, draw like like drama classes and things? Uh... I did, bro, but that shit kind of corny. Like, <laughs> I always I always thought like that shit was like corny. Yeah, yeah. personally, like, and, and God, I never like. God I forbid really you need school. acting for wrestling. <laughs> like God forbid. Like yeah, I want yeah. I want to be a race car driver, but uh, I don't want to get my license. Fuck it, it's corny. Facts, yo, I, don't, I still don't got my license. <laughs> So, so you, you get into you get into the ring, get in get in with Coco Beware. When 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 was it that you start getting a buzz? Coco Beware, Matt Random, sure. <laughs> uh, I got so I got trained after that match with Coco Beware. Oh, so Coco Beware was training you? No, 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 oh, no. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a tag match. <laughs> that would actually was uh, the bird. That would actually been a better story. It's like yeah, Coco Beware saw me. It was like yeah, he started that training me. Fire. I just turned it around. I'm like yeah, then Coco Beware like <laughs> I moved in with him. <laughs> I had to feed his bird every day in order to get the rent. Yeah, that would have been that would actually been fire. I would have had a bri- fire brain buster. <laughs> so who um so who went uh, who who did you who, and, um training under who do you end up training under? So uh, that match was a tag match. It was Coco and this guy named Jersey Kid mm-hmm. versus me and this this other guy named uh, T J Blade. He's like a local guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, after the match, like Jersey Kid was just like, oh like where do you train at and all this stuff. And then I just was like, oh, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't really train. Uh, and he was like, oh, uh, well, you have a lot of potential or whatever. Do you want to, I can take you to schools and, like, help you out or whatever. So I moved in with him when I was, like, 15 for, like, a year. And he took me to, like, BWF in the Bronx, which is where I'm, like, pretty much, like, mostly trained at. Okay. Like, I'm mostly trained at BWF. But then, like, uh, he took me to CZW for the first time, which is, like, my second home school, which is, like, my home school now. Right. And just, like, a ton of places, like, so I just lived with this guy for, like, a year, like, when I was 15, and we were just, like, he would take me to wrestling schools, and, like, we would do weird shit, like, go to the park, and he would be, like, you gotta jump on these, like, he was, like, Jackie Chan and me, bro, like, he would be, like, you gotta, like, pull yourself up onto this thing and do a backflip off. I was, like, okay. What kind of fucking torturous, fucking torturous Mr. Miyagi shit was going on over there? It's like, it's shit. Yeah, he he was definitely on some Mr. Miyagi. I'm over here thinking that he's going, like, yeah, I'm not really trained. I just uh, just practice on watching the movesets on SmackDown vs. (laughs) Raw. That's how I I learned how to lock up. I need to create a move on the game. I know how to do a a, a, a fucking suicide dive from (laughs) from the couch and shit. Tope suicida. Tope suicida. So, um... (laughs) <laughs> when you finally started getting the buzz and in, in, in you know promoters started looking at, at, at what Jordan Oliver is, when did you, when do you start looking to uh, what's gonna define you as a wrestler, your gimmick and stuff? What was the first thing you started looking at? I mean, like I never really looked at looked like saw anything was like oh I want to be like that gimmick. Like I'm pretty like legit. Like my I don't really have like a character. Like the shit that you see is pretty much just me obviously to a, a point but like i never i just wanted to be me always like i always just wanted to be me as a wrestler and like when i honestly the issue was before i got the buzz was i was trying to be like somebody i wasn't i was trying to be this this fucking dude that was like oh i want to shake your hands and i want to i want to be a good old i want to be a good old boy but like you know it's like mm-hmm. that's just not me me type shit like i just always wanted to be me and when i started being me people started recognizing all right, so you took that that that, that upstate um, six year old slinging crack um, gimmick, <laughs> gimmick and said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna run with it." Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. Pretty, that's what that's what I'm trying to do with my 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 young Padawan here from Glendale. I'm trying to uh, get him out of the mean streets of Glendale, New York. Yeah, I can't I can't be going around Zoom Stomach no more. Yeah, I can't be slinging hand it. sanitizer over there. You can't be doing that shit these days. Uh, so Jordan, do you um? You 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 you've been on uh, on MLW for some time, and uh, I know you 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 run into Cornette for for some, uh, a couple of times while there, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when uh, when the video goes out with you having this this match, that um, which by the way, did you think the 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 the, the match that you had was gonna be over that way? Did you think that the 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 internet was gonna actually uh, gravitate to the, the to it the way they did? So. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the story. Yeah, quick. I would, Literally, because I would like to know: was it really like a goof, or you guys were like really trying to get it in? The the night before, like the, maybe like two nights before the show, 
I was at my my parents' house. Like I drove back up to New York or whatever because I live in Jersey now, mm-hmm. just to see my my mom. And I I like I, I smoked like five months or whatever. And I'm in my living room and I'm like just sitting there and I'm like damn, like walking around. Literally like if you ask my girlfriend, I was just standing there like walking in circles for like four hours, bro. At the I was just thinking of this spot though, like I thought of this whole spot off five. You know what I'm saying? We got to the show the next day or whenever it was, and I was like. Hey Blake, I got this idea. It might it might get some clout, but probably not. And that was it. Like that's I I thought maybe maybe because it's so like it was just so long, but I didn't even really think of it as anything because I I do those spots like all the time. That's just like what I do, you know. Mm. Is it is it become a thing now? To that's um the because that's basically what the debate is with old school wrestlers and and for the for the new generation that. It's not even about the wrestling anymore. About getting the views, getting the clout, getting the uh, getting, getting getting viral, getting viral. Is, is that what is that what your generation is looking at now more, or or you know being a guy I like, mean, you, like I mean like a kid like you who was watching wrestling from you know age of six, who's been a student for a while. Do do you get lost in that as well? I don't think so. But I mean, to to say that it's weird to me because if you think about it, like Hogan was wrestling for his audience. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. was trying to get his audience to pay attention. My audience just happens to be the internet audience. That's where most of my viewership comes from. So of course I'm wrestling for, for the, for that audience, because that's the, the biggest audience that I have. Like sure. I wrestle at GCW in front of like 200 people, but GCW's audience, the biggest of it, like is online. Right. So I think, I don't think that maybe some people think like that, like, Oh, I'm going to do this and it's going to get internet clout. But for me, I just think like I just want to have a good match, and I want the match to get the internet clout. I um I, I mentioned Cornet because like I said, you worked with him on MLW, and of course he he was the one that uh basically had a lot to say. Did you have a do you have a good relationship with Cornet before before he he was making his comments? I don't I don't know if we had like a good relationship, but we like talked. Like I would go up to him and be like, because like I I like old school wrestling. Like I always try to put some like my my heel shit like i always try to use like old school heel shit or whatever so i would talk to him about stuff like that and he was always like very open to help that's why as soon as he posted that i told him like bro you you can see me in a locker room i'll, I'll see you in person i don't need i'm not gonna argue with you on the internet like and he, you know what so if you if you if you heard the um his episode when he spoke about it, he didn't speak ill of you he really didn't no no he, he actually said he said that that he thought i had a lot of potential yeah stuff. yeah that he did he did mention it he said yo he, you know he had potential and he just found it that that I guess he was basically saying that you were better than that kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but which is a compliment, De- definitely. It is a compliment when you when you get yeah, for you sure. Because you know he doesn't say much good thing about anybody. Do you get other uh, than like MJF? <laughs> do you get um, do you get that kind of thing to where uh, um, you 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 get individuals who who are the wrestling purist and they're not really into this. I guess I guess the new wave or the new age of wrestling now with the younger generation where they 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 really not into it or, or you just know your your demo right now you know what what target audience you're going for. Man, I mean, I do get like a lot of a lot of old heads like like talent like I I'm not gonna say his name but this dude always this old head always hits me up and he's like you have the potential to be the next top heel why don't you just do that. Why do you need to do all this other high flying shit? And it's like, I always just like tell him like, yeah, whatever. Like that's not what I want to be though. Like I don't want to just be the next like MJF. Like no offense to him, but like I want to be, I want to be a fucking guy that people are like, yo, that guy fucks. That guy's matches are sick, and he knows how to work the crowd. But his matches are still awesome, and it doesn't take away from that. You know what I mean? Like my favorite wrestler is Will Ospreay and and Tiger Mask and and Dynamite Kid and like mm. Kenta and like CM Punk. Like, those guys are all, like, known for their in-ring work. And, like, CM Punk, obviously, is known for his promos and his crowd shit more. But, like, I just don't want to be anything that I don't want to be. That's why I'm on this, like, fuck the vet shit right now. Because I'm so sick of people trying to tell me who I need to be. Like, I know who I need to be. Because, obviously, the shit that I want to do has been working for me for the past four years, you know? Yeah, and that old head that keeps calling you is Dutch Mantel. I wish, bro. I fucking <laughs> love Dutch Mantel. 
<laughs> uh, Little big ass mustache. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna keep you on for too long because I know this is this uh this was out of the blue. But I just have a few more questions for you. Um, but no, I love interviews, so I don't, I don't really. I'm not stressing. Oh, good, good. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Your promos kind of suck, but you're actually sounding very good right now. Because I, I, <laughs> I look at because I see you on your MLW, and I go, "Oh my god, he looks like he's struggling so bad." Oh my god, <laughs> do you cut promos in a mirror? No. <laughs> Here you go. We're gonna we're gonna have to get you high to cut promos and shit. <laughs> get him a blunt. Get him a fucking blunt. <laughs> Let him get a get him an oil. Give him one of them THC shit. <laughs> but do, do, do get you get him a honeycomb? What we doing over here? But I do. I, it's funny because I do like you, and, and and when when I see you in the ring, I, I I I do one of those things where I look at you and I go, "How the fuck did he become a wrestler?" And then when I see you work, I go, oh, "Okay, I get it. The, the kid is the kid is talented." But it's funny because I do see you and stuff like when you do um, the offshoots like the, the Homicide show or you do um, um, just the regular like CCW things where I go, why, why, like, why, why, why would people do this? And this is a, you know, who you kind of remind me of with that too, Pinky, like a, like a Pinky Sanchez, like that kind of thing. Uh, have, you, have you ever worked with Pinky? Yeah, yeah, I know Pinky pretty well. Yeah. So you got you you kind of, which is a compliment because we love Pinky. Pinky's Pinky's a, a, another guy who's going to go down as one of the legends that don't get credited. Um, do you see? Do you see that you you going to uh, find measures to, to fine tune it? You know, work the kinks out. Because how old are you? I'm only twenty years old. Oh my god, you're a baby. You got a you got a, you got a career in front of you, man. Yeah, you got a long. This is what this I should have known because that's why he got this whole cocky mentality of like, yeah, I don't need no. Uh, tell you, Dutch Mantel gonna call. He gonna check you, man. Telling you, <laughs> so, well, it's not. It's not that I'm like cocky or like anything like that. It's just like, for me, like I always had this mindset. Like, if if I think I can do something, like then I know that I'll be able to do that as long as I put my all into it. And that's just the way the energy has always worked for me in my life. Like, right. I wanted to be a wrestler. Like, I became a fucking wrestler. And for people like you that say like like, oh, I don't look like a wrestler. I or how did I become a wrestler? Like. I've been I've been doing this shit for people like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't I'm out here to motivate the youth that are just like me that always get told like, oh, you can't do it or you shouldn't do it, and that's just what I've been doing since since such a long a, a young age. I've been telling people like, fuck you, I can do that. I right. don't need you, you know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't want it to come off cocky. It's just like that's how I've been. Yeah, it's, you know, because it, it's typical. You know, it's the typical status quo where. You tell somebody, yeah, I'm a professional wrestler, and they look at you like, where on the internet? I'm like, are you playing online? Stop playing. You serious? Yeah. You're, you know, you're not the two forty five, six foot two jack dude. You're you're you look like you could play handball in the Upper West Side kind of guy, like that 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 <laughs> kind of look. But like I said, you do, like I said when when I when I see you in the ring, you actually show prowess. You show that you you you're able to do it. Five years from now, where do you where do you see yourself? Um, probably dead. Oh come on! Come Stop on. that! Oh come such on! A, such a t- what we are we got you got heroin demons we don't know about. <laughs> we doing, no, we doing black tar. Like, we mainlining. What are we doing over there, man? I don't know. It's just like I'm. I just I'm just pretty. I'm pretty reckless and like the way shit goes. Like I just don't see myself having like a, a very long life. No, oh, come but on. But like if I happen to be alive in five years, that would be cool. I mean, my main goals in wrestling are to wrestle in New Japan, mm. so I would love to accomplish that. Now, I thought you were going to tell me that you're going to get involved with the Mexican girlfriend's family, who's part of the gar- the cartel and shit, and then, then that's where that's where it takes a real dark turn for Jordan Oliver. <laughs> we're going to see you in the next episode of Narcos and shit. Something's going to go down bad and shit. It's horrible, but no. The, five years from now, I I believe that you'll still be grinding, but you'll be grinding to bigger and better things if you um. Believe in it, man. Fuck, don't, don't give me this dark emo shit, man. Let's let's get let's get it popping. Let's get the Jordan <laughs> Alba shit out there, boy. Stop playing. We matter of fact, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk it to existence. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put on um 2K20, the most shittiest wrestling game ever. I'm the gonna, worst. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a decent looking Jordan Oliver, and I'm gonna have you main main event in WrestleMania. Okay, let's see it. <laughs> Jordan, thanks for being a part of this week's uh, episode of the Turnbuckle Tabloid. Uh, let everybody know where they can get you at, what's your social media outlets, and where you can connect that. All my social medias are, are the Jordan Oliver everywhere, like Twitter and Instagram. Uh, 
And yeah, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. And not only that, you're going to be a part of. Uh, hopefully, if Corona doesn't shut us down, you're gonna be at uh, VXS, which is where at uh, Olski. Yeah, uh, March 29th, we got a big matchup against Daniel, right? Yeah, Daniel. Oh yeah. Daniel Garcia, what, what, what are your thoughts on your opponent there? You think, uh, you're excited for the matchup? He's a mook, right? Oh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty fired up for the match. I mean, like again, like Danny Garcia, he's kind of just somebody that that does everything by the book. You know what I'm saying? Like. He wanted to be a wrestler, so he went to his school, he got trained, he, he goes to college, he does everything that you know, you're supposed to do, and I, I, I'm pretty much the opposite, so it'll be a pretty interesting match. But I bet you that motherfucker ain't getting in the ring with Coco Beware, though. Probably not. Fuck that. He ain't getting no damn ring with Coco Beware. Shit. Against the bird. Oh, what can he expect? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually fought the bird in the back before the match. What can we expect from a Daniel Garcia versus Jordan Oliver on March 29th at VXS? Bro, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna punch this dude in his mouth. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> like I don't. I don't really need to do much. I'm gonna punch him in his in his face. Oh, okay. That, 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 that's pretty much it. Yeah, we could go with that. But, uh, that, that I, I, I mean, Dan just straight, him in the face. Straight, straight shoot. Straight shoot right there. That's what we're gonna do. But once again, Jordan, thank you for your time and um, stay, God bless. stay blunted. And um, um, real quick though, like I because I'm looking at the VXS uh, social media page right now. You did a whole video smoking a blunt, chilling with your boys, getting ready. Yeah. For the, what, what, what what the? Tell me the process of that real quick because I saw that video and I was blown away at the fact that no fucks were given. Uh, what's what's different? Well, what the fuck is different from from this from from a VXS or a, any other promotion, any promotion around here than MLW? Like, what's the process with that shit? I mean, I, Isaac just let it rock. Like, he didn't. He's not trying to control me, and he's letting me do how I want to do. Like, I literally, they pulled up, and I we rolled up some blunts, and I told him just film, just film, and let's see what goes on. Obviously, like the ending part of the video, we talked about more, but just like the whole beginning shit, I just that was just us like vibing and chilling out. So uh, VXS is really for the new generation. It's for the new wave and shit. There's no, no like fucking script or control or none of that shit. It's just like, do what you want to do and do some good shit. Thank you, MLW, for not having a wellness policy. Great. Yeah, God bless, <laughs> right? Jordan, thanks again for chiming in and going in and spending time with us, man. Thanks again. No problem. Catch you later, B. Thank you. See you later.